Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to GFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius Nuchowskas. Today is the 20th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's morning session, recorded session, of course, uh, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, uh, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, it should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute any invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so before we jump into the charts, as always, let's quickly mention uh, a quick mentioning of our JVD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order to not miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JVD Bank website and specifically our JVD Research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on JVDBank.com and click on the research. Um, research tab right there on the top so I believe you can find some useful information here so now then um, quickly uh, to see what's happening here so this is the updated number uh, this morning um, now the of course the yeah, the total uh, confirmed cases continue to rise especially in the US um, the death toll, of course, U.S. is leading the way. Although here, the total death is showing that it, Italy and Spain are and France are in the, are in the top three. However, um, if we click on the U.S. here, and you will see that actually U.S. is leading the way in terms of total deaths. So basically, it's way above um, way above Italy now. Well, getting closer to that twice the number of Italy. Um, so. Let's continue monitoring the situation. I mean, for now, uh, still, there is a little bit of positivity coming out. So last week, we saw some uh, d declines, in, in, especially in Europe, um, in the total amount of infected and deaths. So... <clears throat> Let's continue monitoring the U.S. one, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how everything's getting along there. I mean, uh, China, uh, China, and the in Asia, kind of in general, are performing quite well in that in that case as well. So, managing to control everything. So, yeah, let's see how this is going to continue. Um, jumping, in, jumping into indices, and uh, this is the first one I want to touch on here, and this is German DAX. Now, the idea still remains the same. We need to see a push above the 10,820 territory, which is the which is the high of last week, and in order to kind of aim for higher levels. Now, you can see that overall, uh, like uh, the index closed if on Friday, it closed. Um, it closed in the positive territory. Um, however, the week. Uh, let me just quickly put this one on the chart. The week still kind of ended uh, in the negative zone. However, uh, it it was it remained above this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 19th of March, and in a way, uh, this kind of. Uh, still gives a bit of hope here for the buyers. Um, but as I've mentioned, we, in order to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a push above the 10,820 zone because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and dip. more buyers could be joining in. <clears throat> so, um, in a way, for now, um, for now, basically, yes, we are kind of keeping close eye on this one. The cash index is currently balancing at around 10,715 zone, roughly around there, so still below this barrier, uh, but it's very close. So continue observing the price action here. In terms of the downside, we would like to see still the same idea. We need to see a drop below that the psychological 10,000 zone in order to uh, start considering lower areas. FTSE 100 um, on Friday managed to uh, push nicely here to the upside. However, it still uh, failed to even not only I'm talking not 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 only uh, above the or even let's say it failed to reach again not only the uh, 5,895 territory, uh, which is the high of last week, but also. Uh, it failed to kind of stay above this other level, the the one the, the, the one I was talking about previously, the 5,815, 16 zone. 
So, um, of course, don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, this could still kind of push higher. It could still the bull, the bulls could see see this uh, as an opportunity to step in. However, we we would prefer to to be a little bit on the cautious side and just wait probably for a break above this barrier here, the the five thousand eight hundred ninety five zone, and then kind of aim for higher levels. So for now, uh, we're, we'll, we will remain somewhat. Uh, neutral or even maybe even cautiously bullish but uh, yeah as I said we need to see a push above this barrier first because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep more buyers could be joining in in terms of the downside we would maybe start looking at lower levels if we get a drop below the back below the 5500 zone which is the lowest point of 2016 so keep your eyes on that one guys uh, uh, WTI oil. So this is the the most interesting one, and well, well, I mean, we have managed to drift lower, and this is what I talked about last week. Basically, what I was saying that if we get a close below the twenty psychological twenty zone, this increases the chances of a potential further move lower, and uh, we could see this one. Uh, drifting further down so in a way um, for now guys for now let's be very careful and cautious here and uh, let's see how all this is going to play out but again we have managed to reach the 15.61 zone and let me just jump into a monthly chart um, we even fall, fall, have fallen below that so the 1561 was the is the lowest point of April 1999 guys so now the next important level to consider is around here which is the lowest point of 1998 and in general uh, I mean one of the lowest points here uh, that we have on the on well as much as data as we have here um, last time we were like lows here near the 9.75 zone was back in 1986 in April so after that we had a nice reversal here but again for now guys it's it's very interesting to see where will the uh where will the floor be for this for this commodity however for now it's very difficult to kind of let's say uh, to say that it, this is the floor the 50 15 dollars is already low um however it it for now the technical picture is that it could nothing is stopping it from moving further down towards the um, towards that uh, ten dollar mark roughly around there and if you believe that um, uh, this this is already way too overstretched and over oversold um, well uh, one of the rules to apply in life is always if you think that this is the floor uh, add a little bit more so that's why we're we will be very careful and cautious for now we will continue monitoring the 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 price action here um, yes it is it has hit the 14.6 uh, level this morning and um, 14 14.6 14.7 but it kind of retraced a little bit higher however let's see how this day is going to uh, get along and uh, yep uh, let's continue monitoring this one and be very careful with those uh, buys uh, gold so uh, gold um, here is declining as well so this is what I talked about last week and what I was saying that if we see a close below this 17 uh, oh three oh four territory then uh, we, we could see a further drift lower now you can see that the um, the price is, is today the price is resting on this uh, the the 10th of March high near the 1680 uh, zone 1680 81 roughly around there but to be honest uh, there is a good possibility for this one to drift further south um, especially if it uh, drops again below the 1680 zone and then the next target for us is around the 1645 um uh, or it could even continue drifting further south so yep for now guys be very careful be very cautious and uh, uh also keep your eyes on this upside support line taken from the low of, of may 21st 2019 so keep your eyes on this one if this pushes back above the 1704 territory then yes we will start aiming for higher levels again but we'll be very cautious near the highs of last week ethereum uh ethereum uh here the situation is uh 
interesting for the bulls. So the commodity, oh sorry, the commodity, the, the crypto continues to rise, continues to rise slowly. It's kind of, I would say, grinding higher. So on, on um, Saturday, uh, yes, on Saturday, it had a nice pop here uh, to the upside. And uh, on, on Saturday, it moved above the uh, this barrier, the one that I was talking about last week. And um, basically what I was saying that if we get a nice close above this, then yes, this could kind of increase the chances of a potential further move higher. As you can see the next level for us could be around the 189 zone and uh, then it could continue pushing high north if, if this barrier is no match, of course, for the bulls. This could continue pushing higher towards the, uh, the psychological 200 level or the 208 zone. So keep your eyes on that one. And uh, for now, um, for now, you can see that on Sunday, the the crypto retraced back down, but found support near this level, near this area, near this 200 EMA on the daily chart. And uh, now we're, this morning, we're seeing a bit of a reversal here. So here, as long as this, this crypto remains above the 176.50 zone, then yes, we will uh, stay somewhat positive if it starts pushing lower and we, if we see a uh, a break of this now in terms of the upside line here now this is where it's a bit of a tricky one because this all these lines are tentative and uh, to be honest we could draw one like this one we can connect maybe this one um, you can see that we had a brief uh, overshoot kind of here th through this uh, upside line so if we see a, a drop below this upside line then yes there is a possibility for this one to drift further down however we would still prefer to wait for a drop below the 146.60 zone and then aim for lower levels uh, AD and ZD one of the pairs that I talked about uh, last week um, and what I was saying that is if this pair suddenly uh, breaks below back below this 1.05 32 zone then well i mean this increases the chances of a, a bit of a larger correction to the downside up until this short-term upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of march now <clears throat> excuse me now, for now, from the very, very short term perspective, yes, that's what we're going to be targeting. We're going to be initially we'll be targeting the 200 EMA here on the daily chart. We will see how it performs around here, because don't get me wrong, it may drift a little bit lower here. <clears throat> um, may fail to reach this uh, upside line eventually, could get a hold up near this 200 EMA and then reverse back to the upside. So we've seen this happening many times. So that's why initially our target will be uh, this 200 EMA on the daily chart. If it gets broken, then yes, we will aim for this upside support line. Um, and uh, if this upside support line uh, uh, holds nicely, then well, I mean, we could see um, we could see a nice uh, reversal here back to the upside, and we will get a little bit more comfortable, especially if it if the pair travels back above this uh, 1.05 uh, 32 territory. So keep your eyes on down. Uh, in terms of the downside, too, in order to consider much lower levels we would need to see a drop uh, below the 1.05 uh, what's sorry 1.0352 territory roughly around here which marks the highs of 1st of April and uh, the 7th of April so keep your eyes on that one uh, GBPCHF. Now this one is stuck, but it's very attractive. So after it reversed to the upside in the around mid March, um, it climbed higher. It managed to recover uh, at least around 50% of its losses made from the mid February between mid February and mid March. Uh, so that's a good sign. So in a way, looking at this current price action here, it seems that the <clears throat> the pair it's getting into a bit of a squeeze, uh, which means that there is a possibility to uh, for this one to kind of explode at some point um, if it's not today then maybe it's the, later on this week now according to the economic calendar let me just quickly put this one uh, let me just quickly open up this one and in terms of the economic calendar uh, we do have some data coming out from uh, UK this week so on Tuesday tomorrow we'll have the uh, average earnings um, and of course the unemployment rate uh, from UK uh, then on Wednesday we'll have the inflation figures from UK so basically there is a, if this pair decides to kind of end the day somewhere around here then we may see a bit of action uh, here uh, on Tuesday or on Wednesday so yep keep your eyes on those guys um, and in a way also if we 
do get a pop higher here don't get don't forget that uh, still overall we are below this downside line although it's a bit of a tentative one nevertheless it could provide some resistance so that's why we could see a bit of a push higher here but if it gets a hold up near this downside line we could see another round of selling so keep your eyes on this one uh, USD JPY very quickly here um, the previously I, when I talked about this one I was talking about this downside line and uh, I was saying that to keep an eye on this downside line because if it gets broken then yep uh, this could uh, push uh, a little bit uh, the, the pair could push a little bit higher um, now on Friday um, we saw the pair kind of retracing back down kind of ending the week on this up on this downside line and today we're seeing a bit of another push higher so basically in other words let's first of all get rid of this downside line it's no longer needed because it's it got violated and uh, yep it's just gonna be in the way so what we're gonna focus on right now here are mainly some support and resistance levels now the the first one to watch given that the pair is trying to climb higher keep your eyes on the high of um, of la uh, last Thursday and, and Friday near the 108.08 zone if we get a nice push above this then yes we could consider some higher levels however that's you see the my arrow here for the upside is from this barrier because that's the more comfortable area for us because in a way um, this could break this 108.08 zone travel higher but get a hold up near these EMAs here on the daily chart near the 100 EMA near the 200 EMA and then reverse back down so, so that's why be very careful and that's why we would prefer to see a break above this I do understand we're missing out on a bit of a bit of a move here however um, this this move all this territory is for for now could be seen as a nice range and uh, in a way if it travels higher but let's say fails to move above the 1 9.38 zone here and then reverses back down then we would be getting a nice uh, wide range here for ourselves on the daily chart so yep um, keep your eyes on this on this idea and uh, wait for a break above this barrier here in order to aim for higher levels in terms of the downside uh, yep is if we are considering this to be a, a nice range here then well wait for a drop below this key area of support here the 106.92 zone and then we could uh, aim for lower levels because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, more sellers could be joining in here USD CAD now uh, this one is pushing higher this morning uh, however it's still far away from the high of, of last week near, which are near the 100 uh, 1.4182 83 zone um, in a way yes the, previously I had the upside scenario from here from this territory um, still don't get me wrong this could be a still an in, interesting level to monitor uh, but we could start aiming for the upside if we get a push above the high of last week so basically continue monitoring this 1.4182 zone and if we get a nice push above this then yep we will start aiming for higher levels slightly higher levels because we will keep it short and simple for now you can see that um you can see that uh, the Canadian dollar is weakening. Um, this is understandable because uh, uh, oil is kind of weakening as well, and uh, we know that the Canadian dollar is heavily dependent on oil. Um, so that's why we are seeing USD CAD pushing higher. But this is what I was saying: that it, be very careful, and we're not going to drag this one way too to the upside here, because um, if suddenly oil starts reversing sharply to the upside, now this is when. Uh, this pair might uh, drift to the downside guys so that's why be very careful be very cautious and uh, continue monitoring the levels here and uh, if uh, but how you could play this one out technically is um, if we see a drop below the um, below the current lowest point of April which is around the 1.3856 uh, that's when we will start considering deeper extensions to the downside. Until then, uh, we are not really looking at the downside. Um, and finally, EURUSD. So, uh, this one here is a mess. Um, so, uh, here, let me just jump into a four hour chart because, like I said, it's a little bit of a messy chart. Now, uh, last week I told you guys to kind of keep your eyes on these two highlighted areas because these are the ones to um, to watch for now because as long as the pair kind of trades around here, basically. Uh, because um, basically, we are stuck above this uh, short-term tentative downside uh, resistance line and we're stuck below this short-term upside uh, 
tentative upside support line. So basically we're in no man's land right now. And uh, uh, for now, to be honest, as long as it's going to remain below these two highlighted areas, we're not going to do this. We're going to do anything with this one and uh, we're just going to continue observing the price action. So uh, we need to see a nice good push above the 1.0953 uh, territory. And uh, th this way we could consider the upside here again, because this would place the rate above the 200 EMA here on the four hour chart. And maybe this time more buyers could see this as an, opp as an opportunity to push uh, the pair higher. Um, however, given that we're a little bit closer to this other key important support zone, which is around the 1.077, um, we would like to see a drop below this first. And ideally, we would start looking at lower levels if we get uh, at least a four hour candle close. Now, ideally, we would prefer to see a daily close, but it will start considering lower levels if we get a four hour candle close below this 1.0777. And then, yep, we will aim for lower levels. For now, we're like I said, we're not we're neutral and we're not doing anything with this one. So, um, okay, guys, I really hope you had a fantastic weekend. Um, I had, a, I hope you're all feeling nice and relaxed. Uh, the The week could be an interesting one, uh, this one. And uh, yep, uh, keep your eyes on the price actions on all the instruments. Um, I do understand it's sometimes impossible, but um, yep, uh, just to have a rough idea what's happening in the market. Um, yep, uh, keep on monitoring those. Um, those in uh, those instruments um or you know, as always you can jo join my video um catch my video my video recording uh the next one will be the traders tea time 13 15 gmt today um tomorrow just to remind you that tomorrow we won't have the um just for tomorrow there won't be any espresso nor a tea time uh, we'll resume on wednesday so yeah, guys, um, like I said, catch my uh, traders tea time. We'll have a look at some of these instruments, uh, some new ones, um, and we'll see how the market has reacted, especially it will be very interesting to watch oil nowadays. So um, I'm not saying that this, uh, it, uh, again, somebody might say that it's a good opportunity to buy. Um, yes, could be. However, uh, like I said, there is a bit of room for some more downside. So yeah, guys, uh, keep your eyes on the on everything and uh, catch my video later on, 13, 15 GMT time, my traders uh, tea time, and yep, uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. Thank you very much and bye-bye.